Uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm very excited to be hosting this event and the uh, launch of the Bookshield website. Um, firstly, I'd like to uh, ask Sameh to do our acknowledgement of country. Welcome, Sameh. Hi, Nasser. Hi, everybody. Um, today, we celebrate the role of art to guide us, to remind us, and to help us find hope. Um, but first, uh, we like to pay respect and thanks to the custodians of this ancient land that has embraced us, the land of dream time, stories and songs. As Palestinians around the world commemorate today 72 years of Nakba, 72 years of loss and dispossession, of colonization and resistance, we are mindful that we live on stolen land that has never been ceded. So allow me to indulge and to share my own personal acknowledgement to country. I would like to acknowledge the original owners of this land we live upon and the original owners of the land where we come from. The Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and the Palestinian people under occupation. And to pay my respect to our elders, future, past and present, who safeguard our history, the Hakawatis and weavers of dreamtime stories, forever embedded in our memory. And I would like to express my outrage for Black children in incarceration and Palestinian children in arbitrary detention and young lives stripped from worth because of their color and their religion. And I would like to acknowledge the women who carve life from the sacred earth and breathe into it indigenous pride. And the women across the sea in our homeland who give birth on the rubble of their homes under the bombs and in the crosshairs of snipers at checkpoints. And I would like to acknowledge the men who stand steadfast, dignified, their heads held high, unbent by oppression. And allow me to express my gratitude for those who resist the horrors of settler colonies and those who march with us for equality beyond the rhetorical apology and the meaningless sorry and the dazzling facade of Western civility. I come from colonized land and I stand on colonized land. And right here, I pay my respects to all freedom fighters, past and present. Palestine will be free, and this land will forever be Aboriginal. Thank you so much, Sama. A truly moving and powerful acknowledgement of country. And I too like to echo those thoughts. Thank you so very much. Um, just a matter of housekeeping, ladies and gentlemen, thanks again so much for joining us. We actually had a third Palestinian woman joining us, Sarah Saleh, a spoken word artist, unfortunately. She's not been able to join us. She's had a uh, tragedy yes. in her family um, and she wishes us well and our thoughts and prayers go to her and her family. Um, Samah, there's so many parallels between your acknowledgement of country and the situation for Palestinians and the reality of the colonization of Australia, the myth of terra nullius, and the parallels between that and a land without people for a people without land. And as Palestinians, we understand truly the concept of a loss of space, of our land, of culture. And it's serendipitous. Today is May 15, which for Palestinians is uh, termed the Nakba, the catastrophe. It's on this day that Palestinians the world over mourn the loss of Palestine. It's the date of the creation of the State of Israel. And Israel was, cre was created. Something was lost, and that was Palestine. In the weeks and months preceding this date and the year following this date in 1948, Palestine was ethnically cleansed of some 800,000 Palestinians. Many of those Palestinians fleeing massacres, devastation, horrors, and so many at the end of a rifle. So many of those Palestinians left with a bookshe, a sack, whatever they could muster up in a, in a quick hurried moment to carry with them on their journey as they were torn from their homes. 
Today, over 7 million Palestinians live as refugees around the world. The vast majority of them unable to exercise their inalienable human right to return to their, to, to, to return to their ancestral homelands. Crazily, some 6 million of them live within 100 kilometres and something like 3 million live within a single day's walking distance with their bookshoes ready to go home. Today, as we celebrate the launching of Bookshare's new website, I'd like to remember those people and their pain. I'm very excited uh, to be introducing you to two wonderful Palestinian women. Asil Taya is uh, an important voice in the Australian cultural landscape. As a Palestinian artist and activist, Asil has been instrumental in using her cultural practice to shed light on the experiences of those living in war-torn countries and conditions. She is a fierce and compassionate advocate for humanity and for humans to deal with each other with dignity, kindness and respect. Since arriving in Melbourne, Asil has been an unstoppable force in the cultural landscape. She has created numerous new works such as Bookshare and Lullabies Under the Stars, inviting communities into the experience of asylum seekers and refugees through deeply personal and transformational multi-art engagement. Asil shows an unparalleled commitment to her craft. She eats, sleeps and breathes community arts and cultural development practice as a life force, not only for her, but for the vulnerable communities she engages and supports. We're also joined by Sama Sabawi, who's a multi-award winning playwright, poet and author, who recently acclaimed play Them won a Green Award for Best Writing. She was shortlisted for the prestigious Nick Enright Prize for Playwriting, the Victorian Premier Literary Awards, and was selected for the Victorian Certificate of Education playlist. Them was also nominated by the Green Room Awards for Best Independent Production, Best Direction and Best Ensemble. Samah wrote and co-produced Tales of a City by the Sea, a play that has had more than 100 performances around the world, won two Drama Victoria Awards, was nominated for the Green Room Awards for Best Independent Production and was also selected for the Victorian Certificate of Education Drama Playlist. Samah is a co-editor of Double Exposure, Plays of the Jewish and Palestinian Diasporas, winner of Canada's Patrick O'Neill Award, and is co-author of I Remember My Name, winner of the Palestine Book Award. Samah has recently completed her doctoral thesis, Inheriting Exile, Transgenerational Trauma and Palestinian Australian Identity at Victoria University. She is currently putting her final touches on her debut novel, and beginning next week, she will be a virtual writer in residence for Melbourne University's Union House Theatre. A real pleasure to have you both with us today. Thank you so much, everyone. Asil, I'm going to start with you. Can, we're launching today the Bookshare website. I know we're using Northern Hemisphere time, but can you take us through the genesis of your idea? How did Bookshare come about? Uh, Bugge came about of the memories of me growing up uh, as a child and um, gathering my friends and family in the 15th of May and walking the walk to talk about um, our stories, our pain, uh, and those that we don't know personally, but that, that have left Palestine. We sing for them every time as we know them, as we live their own experiences and hoping for them and for us to be able to see them again on a free Palestine. And um, coming to Melbourne, I've seen so many um, people that, and so many faces and different shapes and colours and cultures and languages. And I was sure that on the land of the First Nation people, there's lots of people that are living and have their own book days coming to Australia, starting from the very first time people landed on this land as settlers until this moment recently with the Palestinian and uh, with the um, Syrians Yemeni like all that's happening around the world and the new refugees I thought there is a lot, lot more to ask and to give to this land and to share the beauty of the diversity and the um, stories these people are bringing to this country and to acknowledge to stop kind of this um, assumptions and and um, uh, behaviors that's happening when people are treating the newcomers as strangers when they also were new to Australia. So in a way, and they are not the First Nation and they are not the um, uh, owners of this land. So just to acknowledge the fact that everybody is has his book day when he came to Australia and to kind of check 
what is happening within the book chase, within the journeys and the homes of those people and to share these kind of experiences with the wider Australia, those that have not really experienced displacement themselves, but someone in their family have decided to have ch changed his home or were forced to change his home. So, uh, Asil, I've seen the production. Tell us, tell the audience who might not have seen it, how you express it using your art. Uh, maybe we can ask um, uh, uh, Elliot to share a video uh, of like like short video. You can see the rest of it on the website soon and uh, on my own website, asiltai.com. But maybe we can share like four minutes just to give an idea of how we do that. Thank you, Asil. Thanks, Elliot. I created Bukte to empower people who might feel out of the conversation about the reasons and impacts of global migration because they don't know the right question to ask or due to fear of saying the wrong thing. Bukte initiates a truly meaningful and personal connections between those who have been forced to leave their home and those who have not experienced so. This process of disconnection from your land always bring a bit of sorrow, a bit sadness, a bit confusion, but at the same time, some genuine hope that we bring into that as well. Um, so that's a piece of joy, that's a piece of freedom, that's a piece of like, okay, it is quite dark and bitter, but sometimes we also add a bit of sugar. It can be a quite dark show in that case, like it can be really heavy. And because of the stories that we're sharing, and probably it depends on the audience, if you have connection directly with that story, that can be quite a trigger for something. But at the same time, we want to provide this all the space of, okay, we are here, we're in the tent, it is a safe space, nothing else is going on, uh, let's breathe here. And let's allow to have a bit more space into our life where we can say, okay, I'm holding this, but maybe I can find another way to carry that on. I came here when I was 11. Um, I, what, I, what I'm bringing to the project is poetry um, or more pain, you know, pain that I haven't spoken about for 30 years. There are so many wars and displacements around. We may not be able to do much about it, but the least we can do is understand. I realised how unhealthy it was not to speak. So to me, this project is a healer. My land and its neighbours is my home. The continent of colours, black skin in all its hues. And in equal, I find comfort in the moments shared with you. Be it silent or fully worded, gaze distracted or alerted. It is humanity I choose for the sake of my still heart and all the sacrifices made by a people of a history that is meant I am here today for the sake of the mercy, the loving one that leads my way. So I wait. Bringing different cultures, it is an interesting thing that is already happening, but in a sort of layer of multiculturality. So multiculturality is the way that you bring different cultures together, but they don't necessarily mix. So that's when we jump into interculturality, the relation between cultures to build up a new one. What sort of message or what sort of advice would you give to someone who was displaced from their home? The point about displacement, the reason why I'm on this show particularly is because I'm representing First Nations people. and people will tend to forget that even though we're from Australia, we actually were displaced in our own country. So any of the neighbouring tribes around us, or language groups, um, where we were placed into these particular groups after going through these massacres, hence why I had those stones with the dates. Those da dates represent the particular massacres that happened throughout Australia. I guess this work is um, something that I find will resonate within each individual that comes and sees us perform. But our... Um uh, people watching later and the participants can go to asiltaya.org to see your um, website and then the Bookshare website will be up at midnight tonight. Asiltaya.com. Asiltaya yeah. Now, Asil, you performed it all over Victoria. How has it been received? How has the interaction been with the public? Uh, it was amazing. It's um, like... I first for the artists to be able to sing first in their own 
a language and to speak in their own language other than English everywhere was a great start and success. But also to hear, for example, we went to Shepparton and one of the Afghan ladies that joined the teams, uh, that joined the audience said, um, I my dad has told me his story, uh, but I... Um, I have lived it today and I'm sure like me, everybody will go home and just like deeply think about what has been going for them and how does that affect them personally and their own stories. So it's like for me to hear the audience coming and people like, like um, leaving the space crying or like emotional. I remember when you came to see Book Day at the Immigration Museum and how strong and powerful it was for you when for everybody that have joined, people acknowledge the importance of talking about it. And the last maybe part that was also cutting is uh, Siramsa, uh, one of the First Nation artists that said how important it is for him to be part of this and how as a, a displaced person within his own country, the pain that he's sharing. And he starts the whole um, uh, performance with the massacres that happened for his people and kind of using stones as the powerful kind of way of hiding them within the sand, hoping or thinking that he might forget and acknowledge the fact that it's not. And we cannot talk about the future without, you know, healing the, the past. So it has been amazing. Like just this June, we'll be working in three different councils around Victoria in Shepparton, in um, Whittlesea, Durban and Kingston, which is just showing the need for councils and for people to be able to work with the stories and the communities and the children to kind of tell them their stories that no one has told before. Fantastic that you've created a medium there, a seal to, to allow those stories to be told. Um, over to you, Samah. Um, uh, thanks so much for sitting so patiently. Um, art can be used as an expression of resistance. And Palestinians, you included, as a seal does, tell our stories those ways. Um, I remember when uh, you first asked me to uh, come and well, participate in Tales and come to the first showing just how overwhelming and overwhelming, uh, overwhelmed I was at the actual performance without realizing the body of work that has to go into getting it to that point, layered with the challenge of being a Palestinian in Australia. Um, can you take me through, or take all of us through, the genesis through to delivery? Um, sure. I just uh, want to, first of all, say I also went and saw Bookshare. And I think it's it's a, an incredible uh, piece of art. I highly recommend for people to support it and to be there for a seal. Um, you know, the reality is 37,000 people every day um, are being forced out of their homes. This is a UN figure, 37,000 people. Uh, and so art like this, um, like, uh, like Bookshare and like the plays that I put on, uh, the power of, of these works is that um, they tell stories and stories are powerful, but they don't just tell you a story. They ignite hope and they ignite empathy. And we need empathy and hope to take action. Uh, and so uh, I salute Asil for her amazing work. And I also uh, want to thank her for lending me her voice in Tales of a City by the Sea. And I guess this is a segue for me now to go on to talk about tales. Uh, but uh, the genesis for Tales was the need to tell an important story um, in order to not just uh, share with the world what is happening in my home city, Gaza, uh, but to also try to uh, make people, when they come to watch it, realize that it could be them. It could be any one of us. Uh, humanity uh, is full of stories. And I, I want to quote Mahmoud Darwish here. Uh, who wrote that whoever writes his story will inherit the land of words. Uh, and words are very powerful. And uh, so that's, that's uh, the reason I wrote Tales. And it was a very long journey. The first draft was uh, written in 2010. Uh, and it's, it's gone through so many processes. Uh, but the sad reality of art being a privilege, uh, and I stand in a place of privilege being in Australia, as difficult as it is, for women of color, for women, uh, and for Palestinians to tell their stories, we still at least have a chance um, at doing that. The play that was written about Gaza, for Gaza, uh, has never been staged. 
to this day in Gaza. And uh, when we attempted to stage it in 2014, um, uh, we, we went through so many problems. Uh, but the biggest one was that bombs started falling. Israel bombed Gaza uh, as we were uh, casting in Gaza at the time. And we, we lost uh, people in our production team. The theater in Gaza was bombed um, later on. And so it, it continues to be a, cha a challenge. So I feel that it's our duty as artists to who have this kind of privilege, who um, are able to tell the stories, uh, to use this unique skill that they have uh, to tell the world what is happening. Yeah, it's so, so, um, so sad to remember 2014. And the reality, you, you spoke about that privilege and even with the privilege we have here in Australia, there is still those layers, mm -hmm. A, funding, B, yeah. you know, a story that is perhaps not palatable to a, a, as wide a demographic as we might need. Talk and I, but, but, but I think with, with, with what is palatable and what is not, I, I really take issue with that because I find, um, and I know it's not, uh, not with you, Nasser, because I know you're just asking the question. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> but I take issue with that but because I find that theatres often uh, underestimate the intelligence of audiences. And so big theatres uh, race to uh, put on stage what they think is palatable and they get to make this judgment. And I think in doing that, they underestimate the intelligence and, and the craving and the hunger of audiences to see something. Uh, that is not the everyday that they see in these big stages. And I've had this experience with both Tales of a City by the Sea, which, um, you know, I had to self-produce and self-fund and and rely on good people like uh, you, Nasser and Asil, and, you know, a community of friends to raise funds so that I can put it on. Uh, but, the sh you know, because I was told that uh, no theatre would produce it because it's not commercially viable. 100 performances later around the world, you know, I would beg to differ. Um, I had the same issue with them. Uh, thank God for La Mama Theatre and a big shout out to La Mama uh, for not just having faith in my work, but in having faith in women writers, in indigenous writers, in marginalized voices and for giving them a platform. And I think um, the bigger theatre uh, stages can, can learn a thing or two from La Mama. Fantastic. Yeah, a huge shout out to our friends there at La Mama. Um, Samah, I'm going to come back to you in a second to share some of some of your um, some of your writings. But over to Asil, uh, and before we're going to throw to a song in a second, Asil. This being Nakba Day for Palestinians, the key is a symbol of return. Uh, many Palestinians today sleep with the key under their pillows. Uh, I've got a dear friend, um, Tara, who lives in Palestine, in Jerusalem, and he helps facilitate third and fourth generation Palestinians returning to their homes. Now, they can return to their homes purely as visitors, and it's amazing that uh, these third and fourth generations can say, okay, we've got to go to the well, right? If I take 15 steps this way, there should be a big olive tree. Turn right, there's where the ruins of the old church were. My house is five more steps. And that story that's shared generationally through many years later, 72 years now since Nakba, symbolized by the key. Can you talk about some of your work that you've done around that? Yeah, uh, through my study and while I was at uni as well, um, being the only Palestinian in an um, Israeli um, uh, art, art college was not easy uh, and to kind of survive and keep my identity and my work I um, I created a house uh, like using wires and just um, like using um, metal wires to kind of create a house the old houses the blocks houses and I hanged keys hanging from it um, and through also my my practice I have interviewed lots of people that um, still live in, within Palestine but displaced within their own home country and uh, I have gathered with, together with uh, historians lots of uh, keys, actual keys that I felt so privileged to be able to hold and photograph um, that were gathered uh, from unfortunately dying uh, elderly in the community that wanted them wanted those keys to be kept and celebrated and um, memorized all the time so as you said yes keys are really a main um, thing and like 
every time, even I, my my three year old daughter has been given a a bear, a bear uh, like teddy bear, and that has a key. I said, Rima, Rima, look, like we they also have a key of return, and we just re like relate always that the keys and teach our children that we always have to carry those keys and not let go of them. So yeah. So um, Asir, get ready for your song. Samah, before you read some poetry, I, I want to see if you can link it somehow. One of the realities in this COVID world that we're dealing in today, and I saw a post from a friend in Gaza and, and it was you know shared all over the world. And it was, dear world, your today is Gaza's every day. Yeah, 15 years of brutal military siege, air, land, sea blockade. You can only get in and out what the Israeli authorities will, will uh, allow. It's personal to you as, um, as a Gazan, but you know, you spoke about our privilege. Can you speak about that and how that might perhaps bring a new play? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always a new play on the horizon, Nasser. Um, look, it's an understatement, uh, to be honest. Uh, we, you know, people are, are uh, sitting in their homes and I, I sympathize and I understand and I'm, I'm also stuck at home in COVID-19 reality. Uh, but I can get food, I can get access to medical help. Um, I am not at fear of having bombs falling from the sky. Um, I'm not at fear of having my child kidnapped from my bed at two o'clock in the morning um, and put in a military prison. Uh, so it is a, an understatement, but, but I get the jest uh, of saying that uh, you're complaining, that you're stuck at home. We've been imprisoned in, the, in what has been called the world's largest, uh, biggest open air prison for, for over a decade. Uh, so uh, that's what I would say about this. Can I just uh, quickly check, uh, how much time do we still have? I thought we were till 12.30. And we've got half an hour. Okay, great. We're great. Palestinian anyway, just keep talking and <laughs> they turn the microphone off. <laughs> good, good. So uh, did you want me to read a poem? Yes, yes please. Uh, all right. So. Um, this poem uh, is from Tales of a City by the Sea, uh, and it, I'm reading it because Asil requested that I read one of the poems that inspired the play Tales of a City by the Sea, and, and it speaks to the state of uh, being locked up and under siege. I wrote this poem, um, a dedication to my husband, who uh, during the 2009 bombing of Gaza uh, felt like he was trapped outside the cage that is the Gaza open air prison. And he was very worried about his family and they were our strength and they were our inspiration. So this poem is dedicated to my husband Munir and to his family in Gaza. It's called Defying the Universe. Are your loved ones trapped behind the wall? Do they need the army's permission for their prayers to reach the sky? For their love to cross the ocean and to touch your thirsty heart are your loved ones trapped do you yearn to be in your family home and when you call them do they always say we are well alhamdulillah does it surprise you that they are whole while you are broken must they always worry about you, urge you to have faith in your exile? Must they always pity you for not breathing the air of your ancestral land? Must they always comfort you even when the bombs are falling? Do you ever wonder who is walled in? Is it you or is it them? And when it finally dawns upon you, that their dignity sets them free? Do you feel ashamed of your liberty? Are your loved ones trapped behind the wall? Do they tell you stories of how they survive? The trees they've replanted, the homes they've rebuilt. Do they assure you that life still goes on? Old men fiddle with their prayer beads. Mothers still bake mamul on Aid. Families still gather under the canopies with loaded 
bunches of grapes dangling above their heads. They nibble on watermelon seeds and drink Madame Mia tea. Women still perfect the art of matchmaking. <laughs> and men, they still talk of freedom and democracy. Children climb on the sycamore trees and lovers woo in secrecy. And no matter how the conditions are adverse, do your loved ones defy the universe? Your loved ones, they defy the universe. Thanks so much, uh, Sima. Thank you. Um, remembering everyone, uh, we're here to celebrate the launching of the Bookshare website. In the chats, you can see the links to both Asil's website, asiltaya.com, um, but also to Bookshare. So be sure to save those hyperlinks so you can go along later on and check them out. Also, feel free to put some questions in that chat if you'd like me to uh, ask a question. Uh, Asil, over to you and your beautiful voice. Uh, okay. Um, I'm just also aware that uh, we are um, like with them um, uh, captioning people. So let's ask them how long we have after I finish the song. Um, the song I'm singing is a song that um, um, I sang before in the symposium for Art Front uh, and I love so much. And for everybody uh, that um, knows Palestine and understand Arabic, I think uh, we will share also the, the words in a minute. Um, it's important for me to, to say like, this is kind of how I feel. I feel home every time I sing it. كوجه المجدالية إلى القباب الخضر والحجارة الطلابي عشرون عاما وأنا أبحث عن أرض وعن هوية سبعون عاما وأنا أبحث عن أرض وعن هوية أبحث عن بيت الذي هناك عن وطن المحاط بالأسناك أبحث عن طفولتي وعن رفاق حارتي أبحث عن طفولتي وعن رفاق حارتي عن كتبي عن صوري عن كل ركن دافئ وكل مزهرية إلى فلسطين خذوني معكم معكم يا أيها الرجال أريد أن أعيش أو أموت كالرجال أصبح عندي الآن بندقية قولوا قولوا لمن يسأل عن قضيتي بارودتي صارت هي الهوية Thank you, Asil. So very, very powerful and moving. Um, the words are in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, so feel free to go in there and you can have a read of them. You can understand the power in those words and why. So very, very moving. Um, sorry, uh, Samah, <sighs> it's a very moving song. No, forget um, Samah. I want to hear more from Asil. Another we'll song. A, <laughs> we'll, we'll give her a chance to get ready for another song. I wanted to ask you, Samah, about the, the fragmentation of Palestine and, and the challenges that has as an artist for collaboration. Mm. So, I mean, most, perhaps most of our people don't realise there's five or six different types of Palestinian. There's Israeli Palestinians, Jerusalem Palestinian, Gazan Palestinian, West Bank Palestinians, Palestinians yeah. that are refugees in Arab countries yeah. and Palestinians like us outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's 
look, the, 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 the system that, um, that has separated the Palestinians, the Israeli systematic um, separation of the Palestinian and, and fragmentation of the Palestinian, um, is there to, to ensure that we cannot collaborate on, on pretty much anything, let alone art. Uh, so Palestinians from the day of their birth are given an ID number. Um, there's five different uh, IDs that you can get if you're born under Israeli rule. Uh, and this ID number determines uh, where you're allowed to live, what rights you can have, um, and pretty much uh, uh, everything that, that is important that can touch on your life. Uh, so it, it is through this ID system, which, which is really an apartheid system uh, that keeps people separate and unequal, uh, that Palestinians find it very difficult to reach out uh, across the divide. Now, I've tried with Tales of the City by the Sea, like I've, I've mentioned earlier, we, we wanted to uh, open, because the story in itself is about, uh, it's a love story between a Palestinian who lives in the US and a Palestinian in Gaza and the impossibility of them coming together because of the siege and the separation. Um, we thought it would be uh, good to try to put on a, uh, three productions at the same time, one in the West Bank, uh, one in Gaza and one in Australia and all three productions in my um, dream world uh, were to open on the same night. And so that's collect, you know, connecting all the artists that are working on these three productions and um, bridging the, the Palestinian art together uh, and making a statement. Uh, naive, uh, but it was worth a try. What happened in reality was that um, the Gaza production was never able to go ahead because of the bombardment, the brutal bombardment of Gaza in 2014, uh, and we, where we've lost people, we've lost um, infrastructure. Uh, it was it was impossible for them to go on um, and, and to put on the production, so they were out of the picture. Uh, in the West Bank, uh, as we started rehearsing. Uh, the uh, Aida refugee camp, it was the Al-Rawad Cultural Center um, that was putting on the production, uh, Fatih, Abdel Fattah Abu Sroor, who's amazing, and a shout out to Al-Rawad uh, while we're at it. Um, he was directing the play. But the, the, the area where the play is, the Janine refugee camp, fell under curfew, extended curfew. Uh, and so the... the our, our team there was not able to make it to rehearsal on time and the production kept getting pushed back. And so they didn't open until almost um, two weeks after we did. Uh, and so for me, that just, uh, that was just a real life example of how, you know, you could be at the starting point in the same, uh, at the starting point in three different places, but you see the impact and the, the the brutality of occupation and the way it stands in the way of, of putting on something, even if it's just artistic and if it's a love story and if it's theater. And really, when you're talking about a people under occupation, theater is such a privilege. Um, you know, it's, it's the day-to-day -day life that they, they can barely survive. And yet you find these pockets of artists who use their art to ignite hope and, and, to, and to resist. And I'll borrow Abdel Fattah Abusrur's phrase, which uh, became the slogan for our play, Tales of a City by the Sea. Uh, what we're putting on is beautiful resistance. And, and that is what Palestinian art is, beautiful resistance. Yeah, beautiful resistance. Thank you so much, Sameh. Um, I'm, I'm gonna go to uh, Asil, but come back to you for another poem. And if you could share with uh, our audience a, a, a genre of art that isn't your space, that something that you see that is beautiful resistance, and perhaps where they might be able to find those Palestinian artists. And then I'm going to get you to do the same thing as here after you sing, and we go some mass poem, and then back to you to share another artist and a different genre to yours. So you mean like other arts? Uh, artists that create um, yeah. other beautiful Palestinian resistance art. And it could be, uh, for me, you know, one of the things that I so admire is women's embroidery, tatris, you know, yeah. the traditional uh, women thob and, and, and the, the embroidery. I think you're wearing a piece now, but anyway. 
enough about me. Go, go, Asil. No, like uh, one of the things that came immediately to my mind is one of my good friends, uh, Mahmoud Sabani. He's a caricature a caricature artist, and he, uh, because of what he did, he he stayed in like he was in jail for for years uh, because of his art and his resistance and uh, many like him uh, Palestinians uh, in different places around the world also get troubled I, I personally was um, um, in, like was in prison just because of my own art uh, and what we do so it's like even those things I admire I don't know if I'm even able to share and talk about and not really getting into troubles while I'm doing as a Palestinian. Um, but yes, I, lo I love um, the other art genre I really, really appreciate, which is other than the embroidery, is the um, 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 making of the instrument, the Palestinian instrument that we use every day. Uh, but now people are uh, doing and um, creating more for like home to keep this culture, what we used to use before as um, tools and instruments at home now become kind of an art piece that no one wants to let go or use uh, uh, scared that they will lose the meaningful and the culture and the heritage of those elements of like the girbal or I don't know the word unfortunately in Arabic but in English but it's kind of um, a big um, uh, wooden uh, piece that normally people use to um, uh, use as to help with uh, making dough and like um, uh, harvesting now they're just keeping all the old instruments and writing on it or like keeping it as an art pieces at mm. home uh, which is like keeping generations and generations uh, and that calligraphy um, the Palestinian artist Bilal Khalid for example the one that um, uh, recolored the photo that we use for Zoom today for this lunch today he is um, writing calligraphy of the Palestinian like Palestinian poets around the world like traveling literally traveling the world and creating murals, huge, huge murals around Europe, uh, telling the stories of Palestinians in siege. So, yeah. Fantastic. Have you got a song ready or should we go to uh, Samar? I always have a song ready, but let's go to Samar. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you sing and then Samar is going to give us a poem. Uh, okay, so I will sing a song from uh, Tales of the City by the Sea that I love so much. And I will also dedicate it to Uncle Munir. Uh, and um, I will finish with a song that you cried when I sang it for you, Nasser. Uh, but uh, we start Tales of, the City, Tales of the City by the Sea by a song that is saying and um, like telling the, the like speaking to a bird and telling him how lucky uh, he is because he can just live in peace and how painful we live, how much pain we live in. Um, Nia lak mahda badak ya tar al bal hushd al warit la hala wa na dallat Nia lak mahda badak ya tar al bum hushd al warit la hala wa na al mahrum Hu jarhi sahaba min yana seda wini Hu jarhi alhawa marimni saka kini Hu niyalak mahdabana shu'abana Wa nadwetu shilti saaid lahana I will also send the lyrics um, to the captioning so they add it to the chat as well. Fantastic. Samah. That was beautiful, Asil. Thank you. <laughs> Thank brings you. Back, brings back great memories. Um, so uh, as far as uh, genres I love uh, listening to music, uh, May Barghouti, I've discovered her uh, of, of recently and she is just an amazing young Palestinian singer. I highly recommend anyone who wants to lose themselves in beautiful songs uh, to look her up. Uh, Ney Barghouti. Um, as far as uh, cultural centers go, I am a big fan of uh, Al Rawad uh, Cultural Center. I think they call themselves Society now, Cultural Society. In Aida camp. In Aida refugee camp. Uh, so look that up. They do incredible work on an ongoing basis. Um, 
and that's I think that's that's enough of for for the plugging of, of uh, others yeah. of others although you know there are so many it's it's Palestinian art has really taken off there are so many incredible poets writers singers um, musicians so um, not mentioning their name uh, I apologize but I don't think we have time for all of them well I think you encapsulated it <laughs> you encapsulated somehow when you said you know it's beautiful resistance and and yes. the reality of the Palestinians in their steadfastness resistance is something that is you know synonymous with Palestinians and thus necessarily our art is reflecting that absolutely and so I think um, the poem I will share with you is called the song of the besieged uh, and it's a poem I wrote uh, for beautiful resistance for Gaza uh, and I wrote it uh, inspired by the uh, idea that the UN has declared Gaza to be unlivable, which is a reality, um, a sad reality, but that the people of Gaza through their march of return have declared that life beyond livability is inevitable. And I saw the march of return as the people of Gaza rattling their cage and singing this song. And so this is the song of the besieged. The UN said Gaza was unlivable, but life beyond livability in Gaza is inevitable, like the rainfall and the winter storms. Ferocious, it grows like dandelions. It powers through like inexorable love, like an irresistible kiss, like the birthing of new life beyond the statistics of death. Life beyond livability in Gaza is inevitable like the sunrise, predictable like the movement of the tides, invincible like flowers in the desert, unassailable like a smile on the lips of the beloved, unequivocal like a word that splits bullets in halves, indomitable like a revolutionary march, unstoppable like the earth's rotation, formidable like a fist in the face of occupation, undeniable like destiny, like freedom from tyranny, like justice for the refugees. So listen carefully. Two million captive hearts are beating off rhythm, there is no harmony beyond livability, only the inevitable. Beware the inevitable. Wow, thanks so much, uh, Samah, thank you. Um, Samah, we're gonna go to Asir, but there's a question in the, um, in the chat there that says, how can we strengthen connections between uh, Australia and Palestine, the cultural connections? Just as a question on notice. That's Asir. a huge question. <laughs> well, that is about, a huge question. You're going to have um, three minutes to give it to us a bit later because we have to wrap up at one o'clock. Okay, sure. Asil, over to you. Hey, I would just say that there is a group on Facebook that's called Artists for Palestine uh, that you right. are more than welcome to join. I started this when I, was, when I first landed in uh, Perth and I just wanted more people to know about Palestine and gathered lots of artists, the Palestinian in diaspora around in, uh, here and in, around the world. So I would just highly like to recommend if you want to connect and you can see the people there. Uh, so that's one. Um, and um, I want to I want to share another song from from Tales of the City by the Sea. That's an, just another teasing. So you, when we have tales, and I'm I just keep asking for <laughs> tales again. When you are say, relentless, Atif. <laughs> that's Palestinian has, resistance for you. <laughs> this just this play has just a lot to um, a lot long life, and I I don't think we should um, just stop it now. But Absolutely. the song is called Ala um, Tari and that's a song that the very first time I met Nasser when we spoke about tales in his office I sang for him and that's the moment I just loved him so much because it was really for someone that didn't know me and me before it was Samah's best um, a weapon to kind of say Nasser you have to support us to put tales on the, on the stage so here we go uh, and I loved you since um, and it's called um, 
على طريق غزة we just shared it على طريق غزة on the way to Gaza they stopped my way one is my beloved person and one uh, is my life uh, and I'll also share that with you um, that's how it goes <laughs> أطعوا صلاتي أطعوا صلاتي وحي حبيب الروح يمي واحد حياتي ودعوني ودعوا يمي صوب الشجع وقالوا شو هم من موت يمي تبقى القاضي نحن دقنا لعذاب يمي دقنا حالات واللي نسي أرضه يمي يا عدم حياته يا عدم حياته Thanks, Cecil. And still works, uh, still makes me tell. cry. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> still makes me cry. Um, uh, Samah, we've only got a few minutes to go. Uh, perhaps you can close with, uh, if you've got another poem ready, otherwise your, your answer to how we strengthen ties before we thank the Arts Front people for this platform. Um, look, I don't have a, a short answer, but, but because Palestine does not have uh, proper institutions to support artists like you know, countries that have ministries of culture and, and art and so on, um, just seek out Palestinian artists, give them a platform, celebrate them, and join a SEALS group to start a, a discussion there. But it's a really good question and, uh, and one that, that deserves a, a little bit more thinking and a little bit more time. Uh, as much as I would love to share another poem with you, I would love to hear another song from Asil. So no, no, I'm yielding, no, no, please. I'm yielding my time. Asil, please, one more song for me. You've dedicated one to Nasser, one to Munir. What do I get? Nothing. Beautiful, thank you. I think that's a great way for us to finish. Thank you so very much to both Asil and Samah for joining us. Sorry, we missed you and we love you and send you our love to uh, the Little Lunch people. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to launch Bukhshe. Uh, make sure you bookmark it and go on to bookshare.com.au and, and download that and check out the performances. Hopefully, uh, Samah will have another showing of them and Tales and her next play, God willing. Uh, I would love to Nasser to um, also in, encourage people to um, subscribe to our um, Bookshare uh, website so they can see when it's on. Uh, unfortunately, we like as uh, when, as a working with the designers, like in the other side of the world, um, our time was in kind of 12 hours. Uh, and we will try to put it earlier, but we would love to share with you things uh, that we are doing as well. And hopefully to invite you to the events we are doing within the Fiji week next month. Uh, and I, really, I would love to thank Sarah and Noam and the team uh, of Little Lunch for really making, I know, I know normally it's a half an hour, but I'm so, so honored to be joined uh, by everybody here and see all the comments from people I know and I love uh, and that are huge supporters of us, like you, Paula, and everybody else that have joined today and sent us lots of love. Um, we really love you so much. And I believe that Art Front and uh, the team would really lead this kind of space into a better place. Fantastic. Well, that's the, that's the, uh, the role of art to, to help our society grow. Finally, a big thank you to our Auslan interpreters. Thank you so very much for your efforts. Great work. And to um, Norman Elliott and everybody else that we haven't mentioned, thank you. And thanks for joining us. And uh, 
uh, and joining us on this special day for Palestine. Thanks so much, Asil and Samah and everyone. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.